thanks for dropping by today for the first installment of the Back to Basics series. I'm Tiffany Spaulding, and if you've never joined me for an organization encounter before, um, I am organization obsessed. This series is an opportunity to focus on sort of the basic structures of a good organization system and sort of all the tips and tricks you need to move forward with organization. So besides the fact that there's an article that's posted on our website, there's this video post that's on the blog, there'll be tweets and Facebook posts and all of those kind of things. So however you like to get your information, this information will be out there and available to you. So as I posted the um, article on our, or sent the article out via email and posted it on our website, the reason we're adding the video component is a couple of reasons. Um, sometimes people just like to see who's talking to them. And um, sometimes it's nice to just be able to turn something on and listen to it while you're doing other things. So rather than having to read the article or follow through on Facebook or whatever, hopefully if you're somewhere where you just need to listen as you're working, you can t turn on this video or podcast, whatever you're listening to, and um, get the information that way. So thanks so much for dropping by, and I'm going to get started now with this installment number one, Back to Basics, the four-section system. The key to being organized is having a system that's easy to use, easy to remember, and easy to stick with, right? If you've joined me for other things, you've heard it over and over again. If it's easy, it gets done, and if it's not easy, you're not going near it. Life is just too busy. So we really need to keep things easy. So if you think about your organization system as a foundation, that's what the four section system is. It's the foundation for your organization system. It's going to provide you the stability of always knowing where things go, the longevity of being able to stick with the same four section system regardless of the subjects that you're scrapbooking or paper crafting or rubber stamping about, um, and the security of knowing it's always going to be the same. Very, it's very simple. So many of us start an organization product without ever considering a system for organizing. In these situations, what we're actually doing is storing or containerizing, not actually organizing. In order to be organized, you must, as a de dictionary definition, you've got a function within a formal structure. It needs to be whole, taking into consideration all the parts and pieces, and it needs to be efficient in its arrangement and function, right? Well, for the purpose of this video, I'm only going to tackle that first component of the um, definition of organization, functioning within a formal structure. Now, don't get scared away by that word formal. That doesn't mean difficult. Formal means stable, secure, long-lasting. You know what it is. There's no mystery there. It's going to be easy to put your supplies away because you're going to totally understand where they go. So when we think about organizing our supplies, we're going to think about organizing them into those four major categories, alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments, A to Z, the calendar year, and then the rainbow are the four categories that we're going to work with. These are large categories that will encompass a huge variety of products and ideas, but at the same time, they're really simple, which makes it very easy for your brain to connect to them. Let's talk a minute about how the brain works because it's really important when it comes to organization. Your brain stores information by the spider web method, right? One thing connects to another thing, um, or maybe several things. So, um, t and all of this, all this connection is what gets you to the information that you need. So within a system, the connection is really important because your brain needs to be able to connect and then bring back the information that you need, and it does it at lightning speed. So here's kind of an example. If you walk by a restaurant and you smell something wonderful, right, your brain spider webs around trying to determine what that smell is. You first you remember it from being a kid, then you remember your mom put a, putting big dollops of sour cream in it, and voila, in your brain, be stroganoff. You might not even know that your brain took that route to get to beef stroganoff. You might smell something, oh, beef stroganoff, right? And until you start thinking about your thinking, which is what we're doing here today, 
you don't even realize that you went through your childhood and saw that plate of beef stroganoff that you loved and then all of a sudden, boom, there it was in your brain. So the brain has to connect to things to find the information that it needs, which is one of the reasons a system is so important. It makes it easier, a straighter, narrow, narrower spider web for your brain to get to to find your stuff. After listening to me today, talking to you about thinking about how you're thinking, you're probably going to hear me harping in your ear, probably for eternity, and I'm sorry for that. But it's once you realize um, the value of thinking about how you're thinking, it makes your life so much simpler, especially when it comes to organization. So thinking requires practice just like playing the piano, speaking French, or doing algebra. People who play a piano, do algebra, or speak French reach a certain level of expertise, and then these things come very naturally to them. They do it without thought. It's a thoughtless experience. Most of us who don't play the piano, speak French, or do algebra think that these people are amazing as they are. But there's another level of pianists, French linguists, and mathematicians who consciously think about their skills. These people are constantly improving their systems through the process of thought. Okay, so as usual, I'm off on a tangent. But my point is, that's what happens when we containerize rather than organize. When you just put things into a box on a shelf without thinking about, how will I remember what's in this box? How will I get things out of the box? In, in essence, are you piling things on top of things? Is it gonna be cumbersome to get things out or add things in? How will I put things back in the box? Is it easy to take the box off the shelf and bring it to me? How will I easily direct other people to the box if that's necessary? Um, how easy will it be to take the box to a crop, right? So all of these things, if you start thinking about them before you start containerizing, that's when you move from containerization and storage into organization. Well, all of these questions seem a little bit overwhelming and exhausting. When you have a good system in place that addresses them, they're answered before they've even been asked because you've already thought about them. And once you think about them once, those connections are already made in your brain, so it makes it so much easier. That is the beautiful thing with the four-section system. The questions are all answered. So let's talk about each section in detail and address some of the common and not so common questions that come up. Um, section one, alphabets, numbers, and punctuation marks. This is a place to sort, organize, and store all of your alphabet stuff that isn't theme or sentiment specific. It doesn't matter what type of product it is, if it's alphanumeric, it's gonna go there. So chipboard, button, brad, uh, pu sticker, punch out, whatever it is, alphanumeric and not theme specific, it belongs in this first section. Because this section is about letters and words and spelling things out, this is also the section I would recommend that you keep your journaling tools in. When I say journaling tools, that might be examples of journaling stamps or journaling templates, things like Titletopia from Creative Memories, those type of things. Anything that you're gonna use to spell something out that's not that sentiment or theme specific is gonna go in this first category and then you're gonna get better use out of those things as well. So um, one of the most common questions I get about the alphanumeric section is, should I uh, sort my alphabets within this section by color? And the answer is no. You should sort them by size, not by color. And the reason you wanna do that is because if you're trying to spell something out, and Fourth of July is a great example, um, and you have all your alphabets sorted by color, then you have to look through, okay, I'm gonna write Fourth of July and I'm gonna do it in red. So you look through red and you find the font that you wanna use but you don't have all the letters you need to spell out 4th of July. Well, then you have to go flipping back through white, see if you have anything in white. You want, and then you think, well, maybe I could split it between red and white. So you pull out the red font and you'd look to see if you have a matching font in white. No, you don't. Well, maybe I could do blue. Now you've got to flip through and look through all the blue things, trying to find something that will coordinate to spell out 4th of July. Whereas if all of those uh, stickers or punch out or whatever they are, um, are by size, you're going to be able to look at, if you're using a scrap rack, that page in your scrap rack and see all of those stickers that are the same. So maybe they're thickers or maybe they're something 
where you got multiple colors and those little five by seven sheets, but you can see all of them and you can see what you've got. So you can quickly go, yes, I have enough red, white, and blue right here to spell out 4th of July. You're not constantly digging and searching for things. And our goal here is to simplify finding those things so that you end up spending your crafting time crafting instead of looking for things. So in terms of alphanumeric, I would group my, my alphabets by size rather than grouping them by color. Um, next question I get often is, should I separate out my chipboard letters uh, and put them all, the, a, B, the A's together, B's together, etc.? cetera? Um, yes and no. Yes, you probably need to separate out your chipboard letters. So if you looked in my scrap rack, you would see that um, I have an embellishment storage page that has chipboard letters in it. But I've got, again, by size. So I've got A, B, C in one pocket, D, E, F in the next pocket, et cetera, for those chipboard letters. And I try to keep the ones together that look the same. So that I'm, if I have foil letters, all the foil letters are together. Now, this is a little bit of a personal preference because some people collage more things together than others. Some people like all the letters to be exactly the same. So you know who you are as a crafter and how that's going to work for you. So if you buy colored chipboard letters or, like I said, foiled chipboard letters, they might be stored together as an alphabet by size, and then the next pocket down would be the same size, but maybe they're not foil, maybe they're you know, matte finish or whatever. But what I wouldn't do is take all the A's from all the different sort of collections and put them in one pocket labeled A, because keeping them together by size and then again by um, paper type or whatever is going to probably be the most beneficial to you. As you're sorting, you just really want to think about that, like how am I going to use this? You want to keep things together that you're going to use together. So that's going to be sort of the divining rod for you in how to put those chipboard letters together. So I kind of do a mix on that where I put the ABC in one pocket, DEF in the next pocket. Section two is themes and sentiments A to Z. Baby, birthday, camping, family, graduation, outdoors, retirement, whatever it is. Um, all of these categories belong in your second section and you're going to put them in alphabetical order so they're easy to find. Um, now, are you seeing a pattern? Because my, the key is easy and making it easy for yourself. So don't overthink it. Don't get caught up in uh, making it into difficult decisions. Make the decisions simple and follow easy patterns that it's easy for your brain to link together to. So the most common question I get when we talk about the calendar year is, um, should I combine my card making, mixed media, rubber stamping, and scrapbooking supplies all together? And the answer is a big fat yes, you should. All of those things can be used in all of those hobbies. So why would you not want to put them all together? If you separate your card making things over here and scrapbooking things here and mixed media things over here, then if you're making something, let's say a birthday frame, right? So you have great things in card making that would work for birthday and great things in scrapbooking that would work for birthday and great things in mixed media that would work for birthday. But if they're all spread out, then you're going to have to rely on your brain to remember where they are and to go look for those things. So I would encourage you, no matter what type of craft supplies you have, to get them all grouped together because you can use them on any type of project that you might want to do. It doesn't matter what kind of project it is. You could use those materials. So group them all together. Big fat yes on that question. Okay, section three, the calendar year. Um, January, February, March, winter, spring, summer, fall. Either way is fine, but the calendar year is where you're going to group everything together that flows into holiday and seasons. So. Um, you're just going to follow the year through and you're going to put uh, Easter in spring and Mother's Day in spring and um, Fourth of July is in summer and Christmas is in winter or December depending on which way you're doing it. So if you're using the month system, it's going to be that way or you can use the seasonal system, winter, spring, summer, fall and group everything together that way. Again, another common question with this um, calendar year is, why do I even need the calendar year section? Why don't I just put Halloween in my themes and sentiments? If I put Halloween under H and fall or under F or autumn under A and Thanksgiving under T, I don't even need that calendar year section. 
You do. You really do. Because um, you want to keep things together you would use together. And supplies that would work for Halloween or Thanksgiving or fall are all going to work across the board. Pumpkins and leaves and trees with no leaves on them and acorns and squirrels and all of those cool things that happen in the fall could be used on Thanksgiving pages and could also be used on Halloween pages or fall harvest festival pages or back to school pages or however you want to call that. But if you have them spread out over in F for fall and H for Halloween and T for Thanksgiving, you're not going to see them. And the goal is when you're working on a fall project that you see all of your options and that you get the best use out of those projects products that you have in your four section system. So calendar year is really important, especially when we talk about not just working at home, but also going to a crop or an event. So the four section system really is um, a great way to set yourself up if you like to go to crops or events. Or if you're somebody who's given up on going to crops and events because it takes so long to pack for a crop or an event, the four section system is really gonna simplify that aspect of the hobbies also. So you'll be able to participate more in events outside of your home or outside of your craft room if you want to. It'll be quicker and easier to pack up and quicker and easier when you get home to unload. So four section system is really key for that as well. Okay, the final section is the rainbow. Section four, our good friend Roy G. Biv is here with us. And then some, I guess. So. This section is the perfect place to store everything from eyelets to flowers. This is where you'll store anything that doesn't fit into one of the first three categories. And these things will be grouped together by color. Yikes, I know some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, yikes, I can't do that. I have been taught, you've been taught, we've been taught to separate everything out. Eyelets, glitter, beads, flowers, paper, stickers, die cuts, whatever it is, we have been taught not to group them all together. But remember, when you group things together, not only is it easier for your brain to find them, it's easier for you to physically find them. So, if the idea of storing your flowers in the same container as your glitter and your ribbons in the same container as your bottle caps gives you hives or makes you nauseous, I'm here to tell you nothing bad will happen when you commingle those embellishments. In fact, some really wonderful things will happen when you store your embellishments by color. The first thing that happens is you can find what you're looking for far more quickly. So if you think to yourself, I need a blue brad, and then you know you can flip to the blue section and see all your blue brads, that's going to make your life easier right there. It's quick and it's easy, and your brain doesn't have to think about it. It's already been trained. It's already been thought through, right? I need something blue, things that are blue are in the blue section, done. Not, I need a blue brad, which drawer are the brads in, which box are the blue brads in, which color of blue brad do I need? And you end up going through layers and layers of stuff to do it. And sometimes in that situation we think, oh my gosh, it's going to be easier for me to run up to Hobby Lobby and buy more blue brads than it is to find the ones that I've got. So putting things all together and making it simple for your brain makes it easy to find what, you, what you're after. Um, and it's more quick and it's more efficient, which means it's more fun, too. Second thing is, you'll use more of your products. Because if you think to yourself, I need a blue brad, and you go to blue, then you're gonna be like, hey, there's more here than those blue brads. Maybe I could use this flower or this you know, tile or whatever it is. So not only are you using more of your products, but you're also using more of your knowledge. We've all taken all these classes and learned how to use all these different products and seen all these different demonstrations. And yet it seems like whatever we currently, whatever we've learned most recently is the thing that we're constantly working with. And you can test this theory out for yourself. Um, get a few scrapbooks that you've done over the years and look through them. And you'll see, so as you go through your scrapbooks, okay, I started with Creative Memories, so all my pages were Creative Memories pages. And then I took a class at the local scrapbook store called Border Basics and Beyond. So as I flip through my pages, it's like borders, borders, borders. Then I learned how to use um, ribbon. So it was like ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. Took a class called Paper Dolls. Every page for months had paper dolls on it. Whatever I had learned most recently, whatever was at the front of my workspace is the thing that I was constantly using. And it seemed like I just traded one thing for the next thing that I had learned and kept going through. So when you group all those products together and you see what you've got, you're also reminded of the knowledge that you have. So you end up using 
more products and also using more knowledge when you're creating things, whether it's a scrapbook page, a card, or some other sort of mixed media art. So it really keeps all of the information fresh and visible for you, and visible is really, really important. Um, the other thing that happens when you use the four section system for organizing is that you become a better designer. And you become a better designer because you stop thinking in terms of items and you start thinking in terms of design as a whole. So when you look at your layout, instead of thinking, I need a blue brad, your brain is going to switch very naturally to saying, this page needs something blue and textured, or this page needs something you know, big and blue, or whatever it is, blue and sparkly. And so then you go to that blue section, and now you can just simply flip through and see all the different things that you have. So your skills improve um, just by virtue of the fact that you're exposed more often to the knowledge that you have and the supplies that you have, and it's so much faster than going and digging through containers, searching for something, only to find that you don't even actually have that color or enough of that thing. So once you group all of these things together, it makes li your life so, so much easier. So common questions from the rainbow. Number one, who is Roy G. Bibb? So Roy G. Bibb is just an easy way to remember the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So if you're trying to keep track of things in rainbow order, if you just remember Roy's name, that makes it easy. But with scrapbooking and paper crafting and card making and mixed media, we have a little bit more than what Roy has to offer us. So you might also have um, black and white, tans and neutrals, and then metallics. So just because Roy has those limited numbers in his name doesn't mean that you have to be limited either. So think about those other categories when you're putting together your four section system. Black, whites, uh, browns, tans, neutrals, and then the metallic section as well. Well, thanks for joining me for this first installment of Back to Basics, the four section system. I hope you found it helpful and the information makes things a little bit more clear about how important it is to have that solid foundation for your organization system. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon.